Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about ellipse points, or the dot, 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 the three periods, which is a, a distinctive piece of punctuation. Um, there's really two major reasons you might use ellipse points. Um, basically, they, they indicate that something has not been written out. Um, so there's there's two major contexts in which you might use this. Um, ellipse points are one of those pieces of punctuation that you likely want to use sparingly, regardless of which of the two reasons you're using it for. So the main reason, uh, what, what, okay, so one reason you might use ellipse points, if you're doing your own writing, particularly creative writing, ellipse points can indicate that something has been purposefully left unsaid. So if we think about dialogue, for instance, if you have a character who starts to make a meaningful or weighty statement and then trails off, that would be one, one use for ellipse points. That dot, 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 at the, where, where that character is trailing off can indicate this is an unfinished thought. This is particularly uh, useful in dialogue heavy forms of writing. So drama may have this, though there's also other ways that uh, playwrights sometimes indicate an unfinished thought. Um, or in some fiction where you're having conversations, you may have characters start to, to make a statement and then not finish, either leaving that, either leaving the implications of the the opening portion of that statement unstated, uh, either leaving the so okay, either leaving the implications unspecified because maybe everybody in the audience or everybody in the group can determine what the implications of that are. Um, or because a character is uncertain. So, so those are kind of the two major things, is, is either like, I don't want to say what we're all thinking. Um, so, I don't know, let's imagine a, a dinosaur movie. Let, let, let's imagine um, a version of uh, Jurassic Park, for example, um, in which you have, right, the iconic water glass scene the right so you've got that bit now a character could very well so sort of, let's say one of the characters who who uh, so a character could very well turn to one of the other characters and say you don't think and then dot 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 the implication being you don't think the dinosaurs have somehow gotten out and are about to start murdering us. Right, so the, that's not a great example necessarily. I just came up with that off the top of my head, but that's one way you could theoretically use this. When there is a point that's important, but that you want the audience to infer, the ellipse points can be used for that. Um, another way in dialogue that ellipse points may be an appropriate um, piece of punctuation, again, is if a character loses their train of thought. So if they're sort of thinking through an idea and then they get stumped, they, they stumble, um, something like this, the ellipse points can be an indication for that, that this, uh, this train of thought has, has derailed, as it were. The other major place where you will see ellipse points is in quotation. Um, so this is probably more likely to come up in scholarly work than it is in creative writing. But if you are if you are quoting source material, and you and there's a piece of that text that's not important for what you're saying, maybe this is an independent clause, maybe this is a caveat, maybe this is a reference to something else that author had said that's not relevant for what you're working on but there's a piece of that quoted text that you don't need. 
for your essay, you can remove that section and put ellipse points in there. Um, so, so this is a way of indicating that material has been left out of this quote. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. The slightly trickier aspect of it is that you want to make sure that the material you are leaving out doesn't substantively alter the meaning of the quotation. That's obviously a sort of dishonest use of scholarly research, dishonest use of source material. So, uh, for, for example, Michel Foucault never said X. If you eliminate never, you fundamentally change the meaning of the sentence. It goes from Michel Foucault never said X to Michel Foucault said X, because you put ellipse points there to indicate the material has been taken out. This is not an ethical or honest use of source material because you are fundamentally distorting what it originally said. Now that's an extreme example, and I think most people most people probably would not attempt to do that in their writing because it's fairly obviously dishonest, but you can also do this on more subtle levels where the things that you take out of um, a piece of quoted material may change the way that readers understand it, even if it's not sort of overtly intentional, even if you're not trying to be deceptive or manipulative. So you want to be cautious about what material is left out of quotations. And again, I would say generally, you, you're safest removing things like independent clauses that don't change the fundamental purpose of this quotation, even if they do provide more context, or sort of references to other parts of this author's argument that you're not dealing with for this, uh, for the argument you're making. That's generally the safest things. The other thing uh, that's worth noting when you are using your ellipse points within quotation marks, uh, within, within quotes from sources, you will sometimes have source material that itself has ellipse points in it. So what you do in that instance, you include in your quotation, the original ellipse points. I would, and I would not redact material from a, uh, from a quotation that already has ellipse points in it, because that's going to be too confusing. But you include those original ellipse points because you want to reproduce the quoted text exactly as it appears in your source. But then with your citation, you include the phrase, original ellipses or ellipses in original. Different places prefer different appro approaches. So in that case, if you're doing a parenthetical citation in MLA, it would be the author's last name, the page number, comma, original ellipses or ellipses in original, whichever you prefer, whichever the, the publisher or the instructor or whatever it is prefers. But you want to indicate that those are original ellipse points and not uh, a signal that you have removed some material. So that's what ellipse points are all about. Fairly easy, fairly straightforward. You likely will not use them that much. But again, in something like dialogue especially, um, you can indicate that either a an audience, a reader, is supposed to pick up on the implications of what's being said, or that a thought has trailed off, or in uh, quoting material from sources, you can indicate that something has been redacted. Those are your two basic uses for this piece of punctuation.